हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग थर्मोडायनेमिक्स माय सेल्फ मिहिर मिश्री असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम मैकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एलजे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आवर सेशन ऑन फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडायनेमिक्स एंड इन पर्टिकुलर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एसएफडब्ल्यू दैट इज स्टेडी फ्लो एनर्जी इक्वेशन फॉर वेरियस डिवाइसेस सो लेट अस स्टार्ट before continuing you are advised to see the derivation of sfw first then follow this lecture so here sfw first device we will consider is nozzle so here as you can see the nozzle is shown over here in the diagram so according to this diagram the one point will uh, represent the inlet section and two point will represent the outlet section of the nozzle so it is convergent divergent nozzle okay so first of all we will write down the main equation of sfw that is Here h1 plus v1 square by 2 plus g z1 plus d q by d m is equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 plus g z2 plus d w x by d m. Now remember students, the concept is very simple. Neglect the terms which are not necessary for this device, for the given device. Okay, because this will be applicable for numerical also. Okay, but here right now uh, we are discussing only theory portion. Okay. so if you think logically then the what is the function of nozzle the function of nozzle is to convert the velocity at the expense of pressure energy right so obviously the nozzle will not produce any work and obviously the nozzle shall be completely insulated so here you can see that the work uh, transfer term and the heat transfer term shall be neglected so let us neglect that so dq by dm will be zero because the nozzle will be completely insulated ideally the nozzle shall be completely insulated in order to prevent any heat loss and the work will not be produced in case of nozzle so dw by dm will also be zero and also the change in potential energy is zero see if the nozzle let us consider the ideal case that the nozzle is situated horizontally so that means whatever amount of uh, distance is from common atom from inlet same amount of distance will be for the exit also from the common atom so that means you can consider or neglect the gz1 and gz2 term so if you will neglect then we are left with h1 plus v1 square by 2 is equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 now if it is a convergent nozzle that means if the velocity of the exit of the nozzle is higher compared to the inlet of the nozzle that means that is the function of the nozzle right you want to increase the velocity that means your exit velocity v2 will be very much higher let us say for example 500 meter per second and compared to that let us say the inlet velocity is very low let us say for example 30 meter per second so compared to 500 meter per second 30 meter per second can be neglected so that means if v2 is very much greater than v1 then you can consider that v1 will be neglected so if v1 will be neglected then you can write h1 is equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 okay so that is how you can consider the enthalpy or energy of the nozzle now from this we can make v2 as a subject so we if you will make v2 as a subject you can write under root of 2 h1 minus h okay so that is how you can write down this equation and you can find out the exit velocity of the nozzle through enthalpy difference very easy to understand right let us move to the next device that is boiler so what is the function of boiler you will apply some heat convert the water into steam that is the function of boiler so here typical diagram of a boiler is shown let us consider this is the inlet that is that is the outlet first of all we will write down the original equation of sfw that is shown over here h1 plus v1 square by 2 plus gz1 plus dq by dm is equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 plus gz2 plus dwx by dm now in this equation observe that boiler if you think logically that boiler will not produce any work so this dwx by dm term can be neglected okay students dwx by dm term can be neglected same way the inlet of the boiler and outlet of the boiler both are let us consider that both are having same elevation from a common atom that means z1 and z2 term can be neglected so z1 and z2 term can be neglected and also in case of boiler the inlet and exit velocity will be nearly same obviously it will not be exactly same but it will be nearly same so the change of uh, velocity can be neglected in the boiler 
So here, what are the thumbs that we want to neglect? First of all, boiler will not produce any shaft work. That is why dwx by dm will be zero. And change in potential and kinetic energy is zero. Potential energy means what your elevation for the inlet and exit will be same from a common data. And change in kinetic energy means what the inlet velocity in the boiler and outlet velocity in the boiler are nearly same. That is why the kinetic energy change is neglected or is considered zero. So that why that is why if this term v square by two g z one v two square by two g z twenty w x by d m is neglected, let me neglect it. So if we will neglect this, right? So v one square by two g z one v two square by two g z two d w x by two. So we are left with h one plus d q by d m is equal to h two, right, students? So here, if we will make d q by d m as a subject, we can write d q is equal to d m into H2 minus H1, so that will give us nothing but the amount of heat transferred in the boiler during the conversion of steam or during the conversion of water into steam, right? And if in rate form you can write dQ by dT, dT is equal to dM by dT into H2 minus H1. That that will give you heat transfer rate, and this will give you heat transfer rate. Okay, so that is how you can uh, apply the SF doubling to the boiler. Now we can also write this equation as Q dot is equal to M dot H two minus H one. Now let us discuss the next device that is SF doubly applied to turbine or compressor. Okay, so turbine and compressor both uh, will be having identical concept with each other. Okay, that is the the expense of enthalpy one will produce the work and uh, at the In part of work, one will increase the enthalpy. That is the case of turbine and compressor, respectively. So initially, we will understand the concept with uh, assuming this uh, diagram of the turbine. So here, uh, a wire frame-like structure is uh, shown at the boundary of the turbine. That is representing nothing but the turbine is completely insulated. Okay. So let us consider this is the inlet of the turbine and this is the outlet of the turbine, and it will produce some. Shaft work, you know that uh, that in turbine, what will happen? Some steam will enter. It will uh, turbine will be having some blades, so the steam will be imparted on the blades of the turbine. So the blades of the turbine will rotate. The blades are connected to a shaft. Shaft is connected to a generator, so it will produce electricity, right? So this is the working of the turbine. So this uh, shaft will rotate. That is nothing but shaft work will be delivered, and the remaining the low energy, low enthalpy steam will be rejected from the turbine. That is shown by point number two over here, right, students? Now let us apply the SF double to this turbine. So first of all, write the original equation. So original equation H one plus U square by two plus G Z one plus D Q by D M is equal to H two plus V two square by two plus G Z two plus D W X by D M. Now in this equation, simple. Let us neglect the terms that are not necessary right now. So ideally. Let us uh, consider that dQ by dM is equal to zero. There shall not be any heat leakage in the turbine. That is why it is completely insulated, right? So dQ by dM shall be zero, right? And also for turbine, you can neglect the kinetic energy terms. That is v1 square by two and v2 square by two. And also you can neglect g0 and g0. Now question might be there in your mind, sir. Here the outlet is over here and the inlet is over here. So, from if you take common data, then from common data the distances are different. Then why you are neglecting it? See, students, the distances are different for inlet and outlet, but the margin or the difference between these two distances are negligible compared to the other terms in the equation. That is why we are neglecting it. Okay. So now what we are left with? We are left with H1, H2, and dWx by dM. Obviously, the work 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 will be the shaft work, so it, you cannot make it zero in the turbine, right? So let us write down h one is equal to h two plus d w x by d m. So if we will make d w x by d m as a subject, so we can write w x by m is equal to h one minus h two, right? And for pump or compressor, what we can write? For pump or compressor, same concept will be applied, but in case of pump or compressor, what will happen? Simple. You will impart some work, and due to the impart of the work, you will have some higher energy. See here, in case of turbine, what happens? Uh, some work is produced. Why this work is produced? Because of the decrease in the enthalpy. 
So that means at the expense of enthalpy of the fluid, you are getting some work. And in the case of compressor or pump, what will happen? You will impart some work and due to that, your outlet enthalpy will be higher than the inlet enthalpy. Okay, so that is the case of pump or compressor. So I will directly write down the concept of neglecting the neglecting the terms will be same as the turbine. So I will directly write down this equation for the turbine or uh, sorry compressor or pump. So here you know that the pump will consume the work. That is why the work pressure of pump will be negative work done on the system. So dwx by dm will be negative. So h1 is equal to h2 minus wx by dm. Okay, wx by m. So that is how you can write down the work done for the pump or compressor as H2 minus H1. So here you can appreciate that the outlet enthalpy will be higher than the inlet enthalpy. Right students? I hope you are clear up to this point. Okay. Now let us move to the next device that is very interesting. Uh, heat exchanger. Okay. See, boiler is also a kind of heat exchanger, but in particular, we are discussing one shell and tube type heat exchanger over here, right? So, here, uh, let us consider this heat exchanger. Let me uh, give you a brief idea that how this heat exchanger will work. See, here from this point, uh, the cold fluid or cold water will be flowing and here we have tubes. So, this water will pass through these tubes. See, I have, hope you can see the red color line highlighted like this, right? So, we have different tubes like this, see like this right one two then this is the third tube then this is the fourth tube right and this is the fifth tube so these five tubes do uh, through these five tubes the cold water will pass and it will exit from here and what will happen around this tube you are spraying some steam okay so obviously this hot steam will pass through this section Okay, so now this steam is passing through around the tubes. Okay, so obviously since it is passing around the tubes, so this steam will reject its heat to the cold water. So this cold water will get hot at this outlet section. And this steam, since the steam is rejecting the heat, it will get condensed and it will be converted into water. So that is why it is written that it is condensed. Condensed means what? Steam is condensed into the water. So here the water will be collected. Okay, I hope you are clear with the working of this typical heat exchanger. So if you uh, recall overall, if you observe overall, then we have two arrows coming inward. That is here and here. And we have two arrows going outward. That is over here and here. Right students? Okay. So now I have already told you during the derivation of SFWE that if we have multiple entry and multiple exit, then also you can write down the equation if you recall. So here we have multiple entry and multiple exit. Till this point before uh, this lecture this discussion, we have already considered the devices which were having single entry, single exit. Now we have multiple entry, multiple exit. Okay, you will observe this during the lab session also that if you observe any uh, heat exchanger, then we will have multiple entry, multiple exit. Okay, so now what we can write the SF double, the SF double can be written as, see, the entry points will be written on the one side and the exit points will be written on the other side. So here you can see entry point is number one corresponding to section one one and the other section is two two, right? Now that is how you can write one and 2 plus dq by d tau as it is same way exit point will be written as the other side of the equation so here the exit point can be written as 3 4 plus dwx by d tau as it is right i hope you can appreciate over here now let us apply this equation to our system so our system let me just remove all the other unnecessary highlight Okay, so let us apply this equation to our system. So if you will apply this to our system, then what will happen? See, W1, instead of W1, I can write WC because cold water is going, right? H1 plus U1 square by 2 plus GZ1 will remain as it is, plus W2. So instead of this W2, I can write WS because steam is entered, get point number 2, right? into h2 plus v2 square by 2 plus gz2 will remain as it is plus dq by d2 will remain as it is then next exit is what w 
3 that is nothing but WC that is cold water out. So I can write WC instead of this W3 into H3 plus V3 square by 2 plus GZ3 as it is plus W4. Right, so instead of W4, I can write simple over here WS. Right, so here I can write WS over here. Right, and H4 plus V4 square by 2 plus GZ4 plus DWX by theta. Right, so that is how this equation can be written. Now, here you can appreciate that the velocity changes in the heat exchanger are negligible. So, if the velocity changes are negligible, then V1 square, V2 square, V3 square, V4 square can be neglected. And also, you can appreciate that uh, the elevation changes are also negligible. So you can neglect the, all the GZ terms, right? And the heat exchanger will not produce any shaft work. So if it is not producing any shaft work, then DWX by theta is zero, right? So what we are left with, we are left with simple WCH1C. These two terms, WCH1, let me just pick another color so it will be easy to understand, right? So this is W1H1. So instead of W1, we have written WC, so WCH1 plus WSH2. So that is shown over here. See WSH2, right? Plus DQ by D tau, right? So here, this DQ by D tau is also neglected, students. Why DQ by D tau is neglected? Because it is assumed that complete heat transfer is occurring. So that means what? That means if we are considering this as our system, this whole as our system boundary. So corresponding to this system boundary, no heat exchange is taking place from outside to this heat exchanger or from this heat exchanger to the outside. So that is why dq by d tau is zero. Obviously, whatever amount of heat transfer is taking place, that is in between the system, within the system, right? So dq by d tau is zero. Okay, so that is why is equal to what? Is equal to WCH3. So you can write WCH3 over here and WSH4, WSH4. Right? So that is how this all four terms can be related. Right? So if you will take uh, WC as common and WS as common, then we can write down the equation as this. Now this equation represents what? Now let me clear this thing to you. This equation is, uh, is what? Uh, mass of steam into enthalpy difference of steam. So whatever energy this steam is rejecting, same energy this water is gaining. Ideally, this should be same. And if these two are not same, then that will give us some value of heat transfer. Okay, but ideally, complete heat transfer shall take place. That is why it is equal to sign. Okay, I hope you are clear up to this point. Now, Further, let us consider the next event that is acceptably applied to a throttling process. So here, throttling means what? See, simple, whenever fluid is flowing through a certain pipe section, and if you are obstructing the fluid flow, then it is known as throttling. Okay, so here, in order to understand that, we have shown a diagram over here. Obviously, this wireframe is shown, this is representing that it is completely insulated. The wireframe shows that it is completely insulated. Keep that thing in your mind. Okay. Now, valve is partially closed. So when the fluid will flow, it will be obstructed. That is why it is throttling. So let us apply the steady flow energy equation. Write down the original equation. Here, we can see that uh, it is completely insulated. That is why heat transfer will be zero. Obviously, it is not producing any work. That is why work, shaft work. So the shaft work is zero. Inlet and outlet is having the same height from common datum, that is why Gz1 and Gz2 are zero. And velocity changes are negligible, that is why V1 square by 2 and V2 square by 2 is zero. Okay, so simply we are left with what H1 and H2. So simple, we can write down the final equation as H1 is equal to H2. And H1 is equal to H2 means what? If you are having any throttling device, then whatever amount of enthalpy you are entering, same amount of enthalpy will be leaving. Okay, and that is known as isenthalpic process. Isenthalpic means what? Your enthalpy will remain constant. And this same concept we will use during uh, refrigeration cycle, VCR cycle, and in particular expansion device. In expansion device, we will use this concept. Okay, I hope you are clear up to this point. Okay, so today we are going to keep up to this point. Thank you.